Hello everyone. So today I'm happy to present to you guys this 2013 Honda Civic. A special thanks to Heron Auto, Opel and Kia for allowing me to come down and review the 2013 Honda Civic today. For all contact information in regards to dealership, please see the description box below. So in today's review, I'm going to be showing you the interior of the car. I'll explain all the features work. We'll also start up and look at the engine as well as go over the performance data. And we're also going to take the car, of course, on a detailed test drive. So, let's get started. The exterior colour in this particular Civic is called Urban Titanium Metallic. Four electric windows, as well as power folding exterior mirrors and lower storage cubbies. Now, the front seats uh, do have uh, temporary seat covers on them at the moment because I believe the uh, seats still have to be cleaned. This car was just recently traded in. So, the power on the engine just apply the clutch and turn. Fires right up. So we're just going to look at a few of the interior features in this car. So first off, it's got this very nice uh, leather wrap multifunction steering wheel. It's got three spoke design, electronic rack and pinion power assisted steering as well. Now a few of the controls on the steering wheel. You got your cruise control off to the right here. Down here you got your Bluetooth controls, and this uh, particular Civic does actually have Bluetooth uh, equipped with it. And then you've got your volume controls here, and you can also navigate through the radio stations using that as well. You've got your menu controls and your trip computer screen. So the screen itself is located up here. Now at the bottom there, those particular uh, figures, such as the outside temperature meter rating on the bottom left, the mileage, which in this case is actually 17,415 kilometers on this particular Civic, and the digital time are usually always located there, no matter what screen you're on. So you've got the analog clock there, which is digital off to the side. And if I turn on the radio, I can just demo this screen. Your radio station comes up there as well as the volume level. This is Private Charlotte Johnson hiring a compound. And then you got your um, shows just the fuel pump as well, um, how much diesel is in the car. And also if I just locate down here, you can see there's an analog version of it as well. And you got your uh, speedo and the oil temperature as well. And also, if you get a higher spec on the Civic, this here would be your engine start-stop button. So, a few other features. Uh, this particular Civic is the ES, so uh, I'll just go through the trim levels. There's the entry-level SE, the next one up from that is the ES, then there's the EX and the EX GT. So, uh, the ES here is very well equipped. It's got a very good radio, very easy to use. You can choose between your CD player, your auxiliary, you got your preset uh, stations there. As well as your uh, little button there for turning on and off the radio. AM um, and FM frequencies, uh, telephone module here, as well as your basic setup for the radio. Then down here you've got your dual zone climate control, very nice and easy to use. This car also has a six speed manual gearbox and to engage reverse, just pull it all the way over to the right and down. And as you can see, the rear backup camera and guidance lines come on. And Honda have also decided to stick with a standard handbrake lever for this car as well. Then you got a few storage cubbies. First off, you got this uh, 12 volt power outlet, and then you got two cup holders here, and then you got a very nice center armrest, and underneath, a very deep storage area with a USB auxiliary and another 12 volt power outlet. And then your main controls here uh, this car has automatic lights, and it also has automatic wipers as well, and you also got the economy mode button. Just open the door here. You can also see down here there's three other controls. You got your trash control button, your interior sensor, and then you got the headlight level adjustment. Just scroll up there. So we'll take a look at the back seats. Our small storage cubby. So even with the driver's seat in my position, uh, legroom is somewhat decent. I suppose that it was moved forward just a tiny bit more. There will be quite a lot more legroom. 
but the headroom in this car is also quite good as well. So it's got rear side curtain airbags, so it's your large rear window, and the center armrest with two cup holders. It's quite a comfy car, decent amount of room in it. So coming round to the boot, it's quite good in size, it's got 477 litres of room. As you can see it's got some plumbing equipment in here as well. It's quite good, you can fit most uh, average everyday items in here. You can also fold the rear seats, now there's actually uh, two ways of adjusting these seats. If you want to create a lot more room in the back here, you know, for hauling things, you can just simply pull the seat up here. You just push this metal bar down, and you do the same with the other side. You can fit, you know, some large items into the back. If I just pull this handle here, the seat folds forward in a split 60-40. And then you have this little piece here, which you can just push down. Doesn't really go down too much. And with the seats folded down, you do get a decent amount of extra room. And those flaps, you know, if you push them down as far as they'll go, they create uh, almost a completely flat floor. So it's quite good. And you can just see the rear backup camera located there. Looks quite nice from the outside. Honda did a very good job at re redesigning this from the 8th generation. It's also got these very nice 16 inch alloy wheels on Michelin tires. Looks very good from the front as well. And as you can see, you've got your LED daylights located in the lower half of the bumper. So let's go and take this car on a test drive and see how it performs. Okay, so let's car around the Civic and get started on the test drive. Okay, so let's get uh, started on the Honda Civic. Uh, a few things about it. We'll start with a little bit of history. The Honda Civic name has been around now since 1972, making this car 43 years old. It's not bad. It's not as old as the Toyota Corolla, but you know, still 43 is a very good age for the uh, Honda Civic. Now this particular one I am driving is the 9th generation. Now this car was produced from 2011 up until the present day. Now the 8th generation, its predecessor, isn't the car I have to admit I was particularly fond of. I really didn't like the styling very much. I thought it was fat. If I'm honest, it was kind of an ugly looking car. I just really couldn't get my head around the design. And I really didn't like the rear design of it. I thought it was very busy in the last generation of the Civic, which we have here, is a big improvement. It's still quite a big car, like the 8th gen was, but they've done a lot more with the styling. It's a much more uh, better looking car. The styling, I would describe it as, you know, sporty, modern, futuristic, and that's just on the outside. The inside of this car is absolutely wonderful, as I was showing you guys earlier. Um, I'm just coming up to the bypass now, but as far as the interior styling goes, it really is very cool because uh, you got your three uh, gauges here as normal for the rev counter and you know the oil temperature and the fuel gauge. But up front here in the dash, right up by the window, you have this huge cutout and it's got the speedometer in it. And you got your other little screen there for the trip computer and radio and whatnot. And um, you know, it's really, really nicely done. It's very well, well laid out, so it is. Other uh, things in the interior that I like, uh, this one being the ES is quite well equipped, so it is. It's got Bluetooth, it's got all your multifunction controls here, it's got cruise control. Uh, the radio, this here is the basic head unit. Now, if you go up to the EX, which is the next one up from the ES, you get a uh, touchscreen unit, which I used briefly before in the Honda CRV. It's a very nice unit, nice to use, but this standard uh, setup is quite good as well. Um, all the controls, now this goes back to the interior design, are very well laid out. For example, over here by the door, 
uh, the main, you know, uh, uh, piece here where all your uh, controls for the windows and all are is nicely sloped up so they're very easily accessible you don't have to reach down for them the radio sits up at a good height as well and also even though this is a hatchback when you're sitting in the interior you feel like you're kind of sitting up high because I feel like I have a very commanding view of the road and the overall interior of the car so I do it's really really nice and uh, there is one slight criticism I have uh, because the speedo was mounted all the way up there in the digital screen the top of the steering wheel can sometimes obscure your visibility. Um, I can just about see it now. It's right now it's telling me I'm doing 90 kilometers an hour. Uh, but you kind of really need to get your driving position and you know well sorted so that you can see the speedometer uh, as well as you know, being comfortable with your uh, driving position. Uh, other things, this car's got dual zone climate control as well. It's another feature. It's got automatic lights, automatic wipers. And uh, it even has this little green button here marked economy mode. Now we find this in most modern day cars. Uh, you know, economy mode, it just does things such as it adjusts the performance of the engine and the transmission, uh, the cruise control and the climate control, just to make the car that little bit more economical. It's not a feature you necessarily have to use because this is a very economical car already. So, you know, it's not something you have to really go for. Okay, so let's look at the performance side. The car has a 1.6 liter turbo diesel DTEC engine to the floor and it really pulls very hard yeah it's quite fast it's got 118 horsepower to do a top speed of 129 miles per hour you might have 130 on it very easily and uh, Honda say this car can do 78.5 miles to the gallon although realistically I think you're going to be hitting up about 75 maybe a little less than that but seriously anything over 60 is still a very very good economy figure you can also choose to have this car with a 1.4 liter uh, VTEC and a 1.8 liter VTEC petrol engine. Uh, you can have an automatic uh, transmission as well. And then there's the 1.6 DTEC that we have here and the 2.2. Uh, the 1.6 diesel uh, is going to be the best selling off range easily because it's the most economical, uh, it's the lowest road tax. Uh, I believe that the road tax in this is like something like 180 or 190 euro. It's very, very cheap. And uh, the pulling power in it is really very good, so it is, you know, it takes off quite well. So um, we're going to come up to a set of back roads in a minute now, and uh, we're just going to go over some of the, uh, you know, driving dynamics, see what the suspension is like and how well it copes with the bumps. Okay, so we're just out in the back roads now, and we'll see how this car handles. Uh, it has an independent McPherson strut suspension up front, and that, coupled with the very nice electric power steering, should mean that the car handles very well. It's also got the uh, torsion beam rear suspension. So it's a little bumpy here. Let's see how it does. A few bumpy patches, and it seems to be soaking them up fine, but it's going to get a little uh, bumpier now in a couple of moments. It handles then corners very nicely. Again with the power, very good. Good strong pull from the diesel engine. So we're coming off the weak bumpy section here now. See how it does. Seems to be doing just fine really. The uh, independent suspension and the uh, multi-link in the rear. Yep, they just uh, absorbed those bumps very well. So they did. I mean that was a very bumpy bit I went over there towards the, uh, the end of that uh, straight. And the Civic, you know, it soaked them up quite well, so it did. I say this is an area as comfortable as the uh, current generation of the Ford Focus, which I also drove right here as well. But it's doing very, very well for itself, and it handles these corners very nicely. You know, you can just kiss the apex here, and it feels effortless. You know, the power steering in this, power steering, sorry, in this car is very, very good. It's light and it's smooth. It's just a joy to drive, so it is. I mean, it doesn't uh, feel sporty, and it's not meant to. Uh, the sportiness is reserved for the Type R Honda Civic, which uh, Honda are currently working on at the moment. But even this 1.6 diesel ES, you know, it's doing quite a good job. So it is. It's uh, it's quiet and it's relaxing and it's very very smooth. Okay, so we're just after leaving the back roads. I was very impressed with the way the car performed back there, so I was. Uh, the suspension soaked up the bumps very well, and uh, handled all the tight corners very, very nicely. So I have to say, overall, I'm really happy with the Civic, so I am. I'm still not a big fan, though, of this uh, design that they were doing with the 8th generation, where they put this um, kind of spoiler design right across the rear window, because every time I look in the mirror, it just kind of irritates me to see a big lump of plastic, because if they just left that out, 
it would be absolutely perfect. I mean, it's quite good as it is, realistically, uh, with the glass that is there. But if they left that out, it would have been absolutely brilliant, you know, with a perfect rear visibility. Uh, but overall, I do like this car quite a lot. You know, it's, it's economical, it's uh, very quiet, it's very well equipped, and they're very well priced as well. As a matter of fact, I am going to be listing the, the um, prices for the Honda Civic below. Uh, they'll be you know, for the brand new 2015 models. Uh, Air and Auto don't actually have a price listed for this 2013 one yet. Actually, they don't even have it advertised on the internet yet. But overall, you know, I'm really happy with this car. Um, can't really think of too many things to fault on, apart from that rear spoiler thingy that Honda are doing. Um, but as I mentioned briefly there in the video just a few moments ago, Honda are actually currently working on a Type R version of this car. It's uh, rumored to have a 2 litre turbocharged VTEC engine. It's going to have well over 300 horsepower. Um, they're currently out testing it, I believe, around the United States in Ohio. So that should be really, really cool. I can't wait to see them in person. I've seen some photos of them so far and it looks absolutely insane. So it does. It's a crazy looking car altogether. Um, but you know what? I, like, I do like Honda Civics in general. Um, didn't really like the last one so much as I was saying, but the one that came before that, the seventh generation, it was kind of that car and everything before it that I think most people love. You know, they were much smaller, more compact, and they were just more focused on, you know, being kind of like a, basically a bit of a toy car, you know, a small, compact little sports car. That's really what the Honda Civics used to be, especially in the seventh generation. I believe the seventh generation Type R is uh, one of the best out there. It's probably everybody's favorite as far as I know anyway. Um, but you know, these days the Honda Civic has gotten a lot bigger. It's you know, it's built now to be more of a family car, and this certainly feels like a family car because the interior of this car is really, really big. There's so much room in here, um, it's got so much equipment, and you know, it's very spacious overall. It's also got a very big boot, and there's plenty of room in them back seats as well. And you know, four different engines to choose from. All of them are relatively economical. Um, don't know the economy figures on the 1.8 VTEC or the 2.2 diesel. Pretty sure, you know, they're decent on fuel, but you know, I wouldn't say they're going to be everyone's top choice. I reckon this here, the 1.6 diesel, is definitely you know the top choice for most people looking for this car. So uh, that's pretty much everything I have to say on the Honda Civic. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I've certainly enjoyed driving around this car. I've had it out for a little over an hour today, so I have one of my uh, longer test drives. And uh, you know, I've enjoyed my time with it. So um, please stay tuned, guys. I'll have plenty more uh, reviews to come. And I also, uh, in addition to that uh, Type R, I am going to be writing up an article on WordPress about the Type R. You know, just the information that we have on so far. But I will update that article over. Uh, coming weeks and months as more information on the car is released. So thanks for watching everyone.